Deesburger anticipating a man underneath zone or a blitzing type situation. talking football, it's the pass. When you're talking pass, it's the quarterback. And when you're talking quarterback, it's Steve Spurrier. He was a high school All-American. A Heisman Trophy winner at the University of Florida. a 10-year veteran of the San Francisco 49ers and a top college and professional coach. He is already among the top 10 all-time college coaches, winning over 70% of his games. He has been the coach of the year both in the Atlantic Coast and Southeastern Conferences, and his teams at Duke and Florida won their school's first conference championships. Spurrier's 1993 University of Florida team won the school's first Sugar Bowl. The coach has proven that he can take raw talent and mold it into near perfection. He did just that when he developed Shane Matthews, a 15 freshman, into the SEC's most valuable player two of three years. Matthews wrote 19 SEC records, throwing for over 9,000 yards and 74 touchdowns before joining the Chicago Bears. Today, Coach Steve Spurrier and Shane Matthews will show you how to throw the ball. Actual game tapes, as used by Florida coaches, will demonstrate how sound fundamentals beat the defense. Now, let's go to the practice field for quarterbacking the Spurrier way. We here at the University of Florida believe that throwing the football is probably the most popular way to run an offense and that is what people really like to see is the ball in the air we also think that if a young man has some talent to throw the ball if he can come out of his hand with a nice spiral then as coaches we can teach him the right footwork the right ball position head position and all the skills that are involved in becoming an outstanding passer and when this occurs then teams have a chance to win a lot of games and also win a lot of championships The first fundamental of throwing is the ball position, just exactly where do you hold it before you throw it. We believe that the best position is right off the right chest area in a natural position, very similar as if he had a baseball bat in his hand looking at the pitcher. As you can see, Shane has got it back. He's got it in two hands also. We are big believers in holding the ball in two hands as long as possible until you're making your stride to throw the ball. The next fundamental of throwing we want to talk about is the head position, and this is probably one that's overlooked by a lot of coaches and a lot of quarterbacks. Uh, we really believe that the head position is one of the most important fundamentals in not letting the defense know where you're throwing the ball, and also enables you to throw the ball very accurately. As you can see, when Shane gets set, he has his head sort of cocked to the left and sort of in a strained position, but it, it sits there very comfortably and very naturally. And by having it right here, he has the ability to go to the right or the ability to go to the left. So we can throw any area of the field from this position right here with his head slightly cocked to the left, ball back, ready to go. But that's the head position we're looking for. We want to face the area we're throwing the ball, whether it be the right side of the field, the middle of the field, or even the left side of the field. And by having your face and head in the proper position, you can see so much of the field, which gives you so many options of where to throw it.
The next fundamental we're going to talk about is transfer of weight from your right side to left side if you're a right-handed quarterback. As you'll see, we get Shane to stand almost completely on his right leg. So all of his weight is back to where he can step and throw at the same time and transfer his weight from his right to left side. Go ahead. Okay, now, if he did not stand on his right side and stood with his weight even on his left and right foot, now try to throw. As you can see, he has to almost throw all arm in that manner. So we believe that getting the weight back, a little bit like a shot putter, uh, a lot like a baseball player with a bat in his hand ready to hit a home run. We want to take our weight from the right side and left side and throw at the same time. Go ahead. Now that's how the football will come out with a lot of velocity, a beautiful spiral, and it gets there quicker. First down, Florida. The next fundamental we want to talk about is just where do you release the football. We believe that the best area to release it is a natural three-quarter overhand delivery. Similar to a baseball pitcher, it's really the natural throwing motion for anyone, three-quarter overhand delivery. We do not believe in sidearm or completely straight overhand. The natural throwing motion should be a three-quarter overhand throw. Go ahead, Shane. Okay. As you can tell, just get it right up here. His, his release point is going to be about three-quarter overhand. This is the natural area, not, not straight over his head. You, you cannot throw accurately releasing there, and obviously sidearm is not the natural motion either. About three-quarter overhand with his arm extended should be the natural release point. Okay, go ahead and throw a couple up, Shane. All right, now after he has released the ball, Watch his shoulders turn in a natural motion. And see where he's finished over here. Very similar to a baseball pitcher. Natural three-quarter overhand and shoulder turn. And this is what projects the ball out there, gives you velocity. And this, this is how our quarterbacks are able to practice and train all day long. Uh, our quarterbacks do not have sore arms because they're throwing in a very natural motion. Three-quarter overarm. And this way, they're able to throw in both practices during two-a-days, and pretty much you can throw all day if you're throwing the correct way. Go ahead, Shane, and demonstrate one more time. As you can see, this is a very natural throwing motion. Shane, I don't believe you've had a sore arm the three years you've been here, have you? Not one. Hadn't had any sore arms, and we throw in the morning and the afternoon during our two-a-day practices because he's throwing with his body, and he's throwing with his shoulders, and it's all coming out together. The last fundamental we want to talk about in just throwing the football is the footwork. Uh, obviously, footwork is important in all the positions of football, but especially for the quarterback. Our quarterbacks train trying to make their feet quicker, as well as training trying to make their hands stronger and quicker. Also, we believe that quick hands and quick feet go together. Okay, in throwing a short pass now, Shane will probably only stride six to eight inches and make a little short overhand throwing motion. Go ahead. Our receiver is only about 10 yards away right now. And go ahead and make that throw one more time, Shane. Just a short step and follow through. And you'll notice he does this all together. It's not step, throw, or follow through. It's all one continuous motion. 
Okay, now the receiver is going to be about 20, 25 yards away. Now Shane will get a little bit more wound up, weight back a little bit, maybe he can bend his knees a little bit more. And now his stride will be a little bit longer as he steps and throws. Good. Okay, one more. The receiver's about 22 yards away now. Step and throw. Good. This is how we incorporate the footwork in the throwing motion for our quarterbacks. We have three basic styles of drop back passing here at the University of Florida. The three step pass, five step, and seven step. Right now, Shane is going to demonstrate a three step drop throwing to our right. Now, he's basically going to take three steps and throw the football. And you'll notice his head position is going to be into the right third area of the field. He's not going to really look at his receiver until he's actually throwing the ball to him. So Shane, if you During our three-step pass to the left, you'll notice that Shane will really want to make sure that he can keep his head cocked into the left third of the field. This will enable him to see everything that's happening on that area and also will put him in position that he'll have the excellent shoulder turn and be able to make a throw with a lot of velocity. All right, Shane. Okay, good. Now, some people have their quarterbacks back out and throw the ball, but we just believe that by turning out all of our passes, we want our quarterbacks to turn out because this will put them in the best throwing position. All the passes that we make, we'd like for our quarterback to have that left shoulder facing his target to where he can get the complete shoulder turn. We just believe you can throw the ball much better from this position than if you were backpedaling out. Shane, show him what would happen if you just were backing out, throwing to the left. Okay, he'd have to, he'd have to sort of get back into this position in order to get the shoulder turn going towards his target. So all of our passes, we teach our quarterbacks to turn out so they can get in the best proper throwing position. Now we want to talk a little bit about our five-step passing game. This is one that most teams are using a lot now because the defensive linemen are so quick, so fast. Wait for the right. play and his head step passing is very important to us and we're going to talk about it right now as you can see when Shane turns out of here if we're throwing to the right if we feel like that's the best area to throw for this particular play then his head position will be somewhere in the right third area of the field and he will take his five steps and we believe in a little hitch step a little hit step so you can gather yourself, get your momentum going back in the direction you're throwing the ball. And this little hit step will help you tremendously in transferring your weight from the right side to the left side. A lot of people don't use the hit step in the five step, but we just believe it enables the quarterbacks to get a little bit more velocity on his throw. Shane? Good. As you can see, when he makes that hitch step, hits set, and lets the ball go, it really comes out of there very naturally and with a lot of velocity. One more time, Shane. Okay, excellent, excellent throw. Okay, now we'll talk about throwing the five-step to the left, okay? 
Now it's a very, very similar move, except now his head position is going to be in the left third area of the field. We want to be able to receive, we want to be able to see all the receivers that are on the left side of the field. So his head will be cocked to the left as he takes his steps, hitch step, and throws. Okay. Excellent. As you can see, as he's going back, how he's working the ball across his chest. Uh, we don't carry it down low or real high. We just feel like if he was just running down the field, carrying a football in, in two hands, this is the area that he would carry it right here. And we're going to show you some drills later that uh, we do to get our quarterbacks comfortable carrying it right in this position. But he sort of works the ball across his chest in a very natural motion. And then when he hitch steps on his right foot, the ball and his right foot sort of hit together. This enables him to bring it all out together as he's making his throw. Let's watch again, okay? Okay, good. As you can see, he's working the football all with his body. His body, his head, his legs, shoulders, they're all working together. And this is how you get good throw time and time again. One more time. The advantage of the seven step drop is that your receivers are able to work more downfield into the deeper areas. If it's third and 15 or 16, we want to be able to throw for a first down. So we're going to use a seven step pass, get our quarterback back there, let him see the defense, see the coverages, and hopefully hit the open receiver somewhere between 15 and 25 yards downfield. Okay, now Shane's going to take seven steps, and you'll notice on his seven step, that his hitch step is going to be a little bigger. When he hits on his seventh step, he's going to get a little extra bend with the knees. And that's because it'll give him more velocity, more momentum, the ability to transfer his weight better as he hitch steps and makes the throw deep to the right. Okay, Shane. Very nice, very nice. As you notice, he almost jumped into that little hit step, which is fine. We like for our quarterbacks to really sort of jump, let both knees bend a little bit. And what this does, it gives you the ability to say, hey, I'm running this way, but to throw the ball successfully going that way, I've got to get my momentum going back forward. And that's exactly what Shane is, is doing here when he transfers his weight on that seventh step. One more. As we said before, the seven-step drop is used with patterns 15 to 25 yards deep or maybe even deeper. And this time, Shane's going to drop back and throw a, a deep corner route to the left. And you'll notice his head position will be in the left side of the field because we want to be able to see everything that's happening over there. Okay. Very nice, very nice. You notice how Shane is holding the ball in two hands all the way until it basically almost comes out of his hands. We like for our quarterbacks to keep it in two hands until you just start your throwing motion, right? The left hand will come off naturally, right, as you're starting your throwing motion. Okay, one more, Shane. Very nice, good throw. All right, now we want to talk about a seven-step throw with a little fake involved, a little fake involved. Okay, receiver, how about uh, being over the middle about 18, 17, 18 yards? All right, 
We have a play where we like to come back and fake to the running back and then get set up and hopefully throw it over the middle for a nice completion. So Shane is going to go back and fake to a running back, but immediately after he makes his fake, he's going to get that ball back in two hands. We believe that you can fake and then get that hand back and get the ball in two hands to put yourself in the proper throwing position. Okay? Go ahead, Shane. Okay, nice one. Nice one. All right, let's do one more of those with a real good fake this time. Okay, good. As you can see, he made the good fake with his left hand and then got it right back on the ball so he could get two hands and get himself into the proper throwing position. Okay, now we're going to talk about throwing the foot. Okay, now we're going to talk about throwing the football while on the run, first to the right and then to the left. When, when throwing on the run, we like for our quarterbacks to try to get in almost the same exact position as if they were just standing and throwing. It's very easy to do if you run the ball, if you will run with the ball in two hands and right before you throw, get, your, get yourself in the proper throwing position. So we like for our quarterbacks Carry the ball in two hands and keep your shoulders and your elbows and your upper body working right before you throw. It's all very rhythmic throw. Shane, let's demonstrate one as you're rolling out to the right. Okay. Okay, very good. As you can see, he keeps the ball in two hands and right before he throws, he's got his back of his left shoulder going toward his target to where he can rotate his shoulders make the complete shoulder turn, and throw the ball with a three-quarter overhand delivery. Okay, Shane, one more time. Okay, very good. Good one. Now let's throw a couple to the left. Now, before you take off, Shane, throwing to the left is really very simple. It's the same thing, except now, before he makes his throw, he's got to really get his shoulders back to where the back of his left shoulder will be facing his target. So again, it's just a matter of running with the ball in two hands and really rotating it across your uh, numbers and then making the shoulder turn and three-quarter overhand delivery. Okay, Shane, go ahead. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, this time really, really emphasize running with the ball like this this time, okay? There you go. Attaway, keep the ball working at all times as you're running. Okay, one more time, throwing to the left. There's a good one right there. Okay. Basically, when throwing on the run, just keep the ball in two hands and make sure you get the back of your left shoulder going towards your target.
Now we'd like to talk a little bit about the drills we do every day before practice begins uh, here at Florida and the same drills we've been doing the last uh, nine years that I've been coaching quarterbacks. The first drill we want to do is just take the ball, hold it in two hands, and just run with it down the field and get your head looking back this way. This is all the drop, the quarterback drop is, is running with the ball this way while looking back this way. Shane will demonstrate running naturally down the field with his head looking back this way. Go. All right, now look back. There you go. Okay, very good. As you can see, all he's doing is running with the football very naturally, and then he puts his head back so he can look downfield. And that's all the quarterback drop is, is running backwards with your head back. Okay, Shane, just do about 10 yards of that one more time. Okay, work the ball a little more. There you go. Okay, all right, bring it back. Okay, this is the first drill we do. The next one we do is one that a lot of defensive backfield coaches have used for many years. Is just going. The next one we do is one that a lot of defensive backfield coaches have used for many years is just going in one direction and turning and going the other way. Uh, Shane will demonstrate, and the reason we do it is because it's a way of teaching our quarterbacks to keep the ball in two hands while they're running and while they're moving around in the pocket or rolling out or wherever they are. We like for our quarterbacks to hold the ball in two hands. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, that's a drill we do that just helps our quarterbacks remember I need to hold it in two hands no matter where I move as I go backwards. His head cocked left as far as he possibly can and also the quick feet and the quick hands doing this uh, quick karaoke step. All right, Shane. All right, good, good, that's fine. Again, this is just a good drill to help our quarterbacks emphasize keeping your head as far left as possible, emphasize the quick feet and the quick hands. Another drill we do here at the University of Florida to help our quarterbacks, we call a five by five drill. And this is just a drill where the quarterback holds the ball in two hands, he backpedals, he runs to the right, he runs to the left, he runs forward, basically running in all the areas you possibly can while holding the ball in two hands and planting and cutting off the correct foot. So many times in football, quarterbacks and other players stumble and slip because they do not plant the correct foot in which they need to transfer their weight and go another direction. So this drill, hopefully helps our players move around on the football field and keep the ball in two hands at the same time. Okay, Shane, let's do it for him. Okay, back. Okay, as you can see now, every time he planted and went another direction, he did it off the correct foot. And he had the ball in two hands, and he had the ball working with his body. So when he planted off the right foot, the ball went with his right foot, and then he went the other way. If he planted off the left foot, the ball was there, and then going in the other direction. And we just think this is a good drill to help our quarterbacks feel very comfortable as they carry the ball in two hands, no matter what they're doing. One area of passing that we don't really talk about a lot, but people a lot of ask so often is, where exactly do you hold the ball? Uh, I found that most quarterbacks have a natural area that they like to hold it, and we really don't talk too much about it. The, the one thing that we want to emphasize is getting the best grip possible on the football. And of course, that will enable you to, to make the good throw. Now, as you can see, Shane, put your hand on it, Shane hold it and we really don't talk too much about it. The, the one thing that we want to emphasize is getting the best grip possible on the football. And of course that will enable you to, to make the good throw. Now, as you can see, Shane, put your hand on it, Shane. Shane likes for this little finger to be on top of the seams. Uh, 
when I played, my little finger was on top of the seams. And it seems like uh, some quarterbacks, I know uh, I've seen them that hold their finger up there. But really, I think most people try to teach people to hold the ball, not in the middle, not at the end, but somewhere uh, between the middle and the end is sort of the natural hand position on the ball. But what we try to emphasize is getting the good grip on the ball. And that's a big reason we hold it in two hands. So the left hand can squeeze that thing in there to where you get an excellent grip. And not only do you get the good grip with the ball in two hands, but it forces both shoulders to work together. And no matter what sport, anything that's involved in throwing or hitting, both shoulders have to work together for the maximum results. And, and that's the reason we emphasize the ball in two hands as long as possible. Two of the best training drills to develop the quarterback that I've ever found, we're gonna to show to you right now. The first one is the two-hand chest pass with just a regular rubber basketball against a wall 100 times without stopping. What this does is develop the hand muscles. You have muscles all through your hands and fingers that can be strengthened with this drill. At this time, Shane will show you the two-hand chest pass with the basketball against a wall. Okay, as you can see, he was really exercising his hands and all those muscles that are associated with throwing a football. Next, we're going to show you the regular jump rope. Very simple that athletes in all sports use. And I firmly believe, as we do here, that quick feet and quick hands are associated with playing the position of quarterback very well. Shane will just demonstrate the regular two-handed, two two-footed jump rope. As you can see, both of these drills are very similar to drills that a boxer would do. The boxer has the little bag that he hits with his hands as quickly as he can, and he also does lots of jump rope. We ask our quarterbacks to jump 500 times without stopping. The really good quarterbacks have quick hands and quick feet, and these two drills right here will enable you to develop much, much quicker feet and hands. I think everyone is successful certainly uses that term practice, practice, practice. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Our practices here at Florida include these drills every day, and they include a lot of form throws and a lot of throwing to our receivers. So hopefully, when we get into a game, uh, all of this mechanics and fundamentals of throwing become second nature. We do not have to think about them. Uh, we just naturally go through that form and that throwing motion, and now we can concentrate on the pass pattern, the defense, and that's really about all a quarterback needs to be able to think about. Uh, there's so, so much involved in playing the quarterback position. You basically need to know uh, all the different defensive coverages. You need to know where all of your receivers are going. You need to know if your pass protection will hold up against that defensive rush. So. If you know that you do not have to think about the mechanics of throwing, then certainly you're able to concentrate on where you have to throw the ball. A high school quarterback does not see that many different defenses. Usually there's a three-deep zone, a two-deep zone, and then maybe some kind of blitz. So I'm sure his high school coach can prepare him for those three types of coverages. Again, in college we see a few more than that, although there's only so many that, uh, that can be played. But it does require repetition, requires a lot of practice. Uh, and again, the, a quarterback who will take time to study and learn the defenses, the defensive coverages especially, uh, he's the guy that's going to be the most successful because he will know the weakness of each defense. Uh, there is no one great pass defense. Uh, if there was one that was the best, everyone would be using it. So, in other words, there's a weakness in about every type of coverage. And it's our job as offensive coaches and the job of the quarterback is to find out, hey, where's the weak spot in that 
type of coverage, and that's where we should be attacking. The first job a quarterback must do f for his team is to, to be a leader, to give them some confidence that he knows what he's doing, that he can get the job done at quarterback. And if he's a confident young man and he does not make a lot of mistakes, he's not nervous, he's not timid, he doesn't play like he's scared, then that will spread to the rest of the guys on the team. So that, that's probably the most important thing. The quarterback calls the plays in the huddle. He's the first one that says anything at the line of scrimmage. If he's confident, if he feels like there's a good play being called, then he can spread that to his teammates. Uh, confidence is contagious. There's no doubt about that. And uh, almost all successful teams I've ever seen have had a quarterback that's a very confident young man, and he knows what he's doing, and that spreads to his teammates. Here at the University of Florida, we do not use the word winning very much at all. Uh, we try to talk about what's necessary to make us all winners. We feel as if no one person can control whether or not the Gators win on Saturday or not. Uh, as head coach, hopefully I can call some good plays, a lot of good plays, and hopefully I've got the quarterback ready and our offense ready uh, for the other team's defense and so forth. And hopefully our defense has got a good plan and we're all motivated. Uh, but what we try to do is get each player, each coach, to do his best in his assignment. If we all together collectively do our jobs with the maximum effort, with enthusiasm, and with intelligence, then we've got a good chance as a team to be successful. Uh, winning is just a byproduct of so many people doing the right thing the best they can at a full speed level. So we challenge each of our players and coaches each week to make sure that you've given your best in practice, in the meeting rooms, in the weight room, and during the game. And if we'll all do that, we've got an excellent chance to be successful. If we've only got about half the players doing that, then, uh, then we're in trouble. So we, we challenge everyone that's involved with the team to try to be the best they possibly can uh, the entire week. I think the true champions, the peak performers in every sport and also in the business world uh, are people that expect to be successful. Uh, they're confident. Uh, they trust their talent. They know their limitations also. Uh, there's so many qualities and traits of highly successful peak performers. Uh, one, one trait that they all have is uh, they do not become complacent after success. Uh, human nature sort of tells us all to relax a little bit after we've won a big game or we've had a big sale as a salesperson. But the true champion is a person who's able to push himself after having huge successes. And also, he's the same guy that after a bad game or a, a loss or a big setback, he's able to pick himself up, not get depressed, not lose his confidence, and to keep pushing, being very persistent. And the persistent person is, again, one that will, will end up being highly successful. We're very fortunate here at the University of Florida to play in front of 84, 85,000 people here at home just about every game. And we're fortunate to uh, play on television so many times. But the most important objective for our players is to get a degree from University of Florida. Uh, so many kids come to college, young men, feel like that they're such good players that they're going to eventually make a ton of money playing professional football. And it just does not work out. Uh, the statistics say that one half of one percent that play college football uh, make it in the NFL. And even the ones that make it, that one half of one percent, the lifespan of a pro player now is only four years. So you're 25, 26 years old, and now what do you do the rest of your life? So we try our best to impress upon our players the main objective coming to the University of Florida is to graduate. That's what we want for all of our players. Uh, nowadays, to just get into a major university or, or any fine school, you've really got to be a good student. Uh, the competition is so keen uh, that a high school student 
that only has about a C average and does not make very high marks on the college board exam, it's going to have a difficult time just getting into a, a good school, a major university. So we uh, try our best when I have a chance to go speak at the high school banquets and so forth uh, to tell those young men and young women that they need to concentrate on making the very best grades they can in high school. Uh, Obviously, nowadays, an education is so important if we want to get a meaningful job and if we want to live a little bit better than uh, maybe the, the lower income people live. So that's something, you know, we all can do with uh, a little extra effort, dedication, commitment. So it all starts right back in high school, the uh, sophomore year. Really, really starts about the ninth grade now, ninth, tenth, all the way through. And get in a habit of just doing the best you can in the classroom because it will certainly pay off someday for you.